Um, this is a really important topic, and um, I've got a I've got a good presentation for you today. A good training. We're going to talk about specifics, um, how to actually go in and design um, and execute on a world class customer experience. Um, so let's let's get into let's get into this. Um, We cannot, none of us can deny the fact that the game of business has really been changed forever, just in the last couple of years. One of the things that's really changed the game in a significant way is this, online reviews. Um, we all are now um, condition to <laughs> looking at looking at reviews online for everything for everything um, and they're critical to our all of our success I mean whether you're a marketing company a home improvement company um, we have a dentist that's up on the fourth floor um, there's a, an accountant uh, down the hall, there's a medical company down down that hall. All all of the all of this, all of these businesses, all of these companies, not just us in home improvement, it's everybody, right? Um, online reviews have really changed the game. Now, I don't have a problem telling you these are old statistics because here's what I know. When you say 92% of consumers, that's pretty much all in, right? And this was back in, you know, a couple years ago. So what is it today? Today it's everybody. Everybody's looking at online reviews. And what they're doing is, I was talking with, I was talking with um, a client yesterday, and we know that what we're doing, he does a lot of print and does a lot of direct mail, does about a thousand jobs a year. And he knows that, you know, one of the things we were talking about was print, print advertising. And he says it's getting harder and harder and harder to track the effectiveness of any media that's not Internet. Because what's happening is people will see, your, see you on TV, they'll see you on uh, print, newspaper, magazine, whatever you're doing, even on the Internet if they're searching, before they're going to contact you, they want to go check you out. So they are going online and they want to see what people are saying about you, about your company, about what it was like to do business with you, right? So they're looking for, and what they're really looking for, and then think about your own behavior here. Think about your own behavior here. When you are going and looking and deciding whether or not you're going to buy a product or do business with a company, what do you want to see? Well, you want to see a lot of different reviews. You don't necessarily want to see only five-star reviews. You want to see what the upset person said, right? But of course, as business owners, we only want to have one of those to every 10 good ones that we have. We're looking for recency. We're looking for people that have bought the product or done business with these people with us recently, like within the last week, right? You can't get away with what you did three years ago anymore, right? So this is what's happening. And people now are going online and they're expressing their opinions and their view, their experience with your companies, right? Now, I tell the story about this little $8 thing that I bought on Amazon way back, I don't know, look at this, uh, you purchased this item February 3rd, 2016, last year, right, year and a half ago. Um, but before I bought it, look at the price, $7.95 prime, $7.95. People spend more than that on a cup of friggin' coffee. Look at this, 2,894 customer reviews. Did I go in there and read a few of those? Yeah, right? 
it wasn't because it's eight dollars it's because of the inconvenience if the thing isn't work if it doesn't work right I was looking for a specific solution and I needed to make sure that this was going to be it otherwise I didn't want to waste my time it's not about the eight dollars it's about wasting time now when it's something else that we're all used to we've all gotten used to hotels right we look at hotels so I just pulled one up here you know I did this this morning Expedia and I just put in um, Coral Gables right look at the reviews 552 reviews 4.5 out of 5 right so now we're gonna go look before you book at this hotel especially if it's for pleasure especially for pleasure for business I think we're a little more lenient but not a whole lot a little more lenient but we, if it's for pleasure and we're gonna camp out there for a few days we want to make sure that what people are saying about or, or, or what people say about this place is you know we want to know before we go there right so we're gonna go look at those reviews we do the same you know we do this with restaurants if you got a bad reviews on a restaurant nobody's going you are dead in the water it's one of those businesses where you with bad reviews you're dead in the water we haven't got there yet with home improvement but it's coming it's coming okay? so here you know like with home improvement you know, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a search. I saw Aries Roofing, right? I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look for this. 79 Google reviews, 4.9 rating. All right, so let me click into there and let me see what's going on. Let me see who these people are and what these people do, right? Now, the with, with, um, with reviews, there's two things that are important. There is, well, a few things that are important. One is recency, you know, when was your last uh, review, but also how many are there, right? So we don't want one from last week and one from three months ago and one from six months ago. We want them from, you know, we want to be, we want Google reviews every week, every week, every week, every week. This should be your goal, by the way, is every week you want to have fresh new Google reviews all right the other side of that though is star rating right so now star rating is all is, is almost more important than the number of reviews but I think you need to have both right so the difference now the difference between somebody that's got two stars and three stars four stars right if you look at this if you've got two stars versus four you'll get three and a half times more customers. Now, I didn't do this research. This is all by really smart internet people, okay? So, um, but we all know this to be true because if today, you know, this is back, this is again from that same research. So this is older, older information, but if we take it, all it's doing is escalating, right? So today it's, we're not doing business with two and three star businesses anymore you're done if you're two or three stars unless you've got a whole nother machine going on for lead generation you're gonna lose people online if they go and they check out your reviews and you're at two stars you're at three stars you're losing people now, if you got a big enough machine going which I know some companies do and they have two star reviews um, you know you could get away with it but only for a certain amount of time but the other the bad side of that is your marketing costs are going to be higher you're going to have to discount to sell jobs it's it just it's ugly. it's an ugly way to do uh, to do business now I did a local search here for a roofer here in Miami and uh, you know this company came up and uh, they've got a 4.3 with five Google reviews. The second thing that showed up for them was Yelp. Now I know how a lot of you feel about Yelp and let's not get into all of the, the Yelp thing. In this, what's important here in this example is Yelp showed up second, 
right? Yelp showed up second. It was, it's there. Now, in this case, Yelp, uh, the Yelp reviews aren't even customers. They're people that didn't even do business with these people. They're just complaining about how expensive they are. Now, if you look at the other company down below, look at this. 4.9, 140 Google reviews. The second thing that came up for them is Facebook. Now, the, reason, the only reason you want Facebook reviews is because Facebook's got a lot of SEO juice, so meaning it's going to show up, right? The, 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 your Facebook page is going to show up just because Facebook has got so much juice. So you definitely want to throw some people over to Facebook as well so that you don't have this happen to you. Right, you want, you know, you'd rather have this happen to you. But the big question here is, who's getting more leads? And the even bigger question is, who would you choose if you were looking for a roofing company in Miami? Who's going to get the first phone call? It's going to be this guy, right? I mean, it's just without question, right? So beyond the obvious advantages. Your online reviews and or online reputation also is talking to people 24-7 about your company. So whoever's searching on the in internet and looking for your specific service, it's going 24-7. It's out there for people to, 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 to see. And the incredible thing is, is that they're gonna re, they're gonna trust they're gonna trust these reviews from people they don't even know. By the way, from people they don't even know, um, they're gonna trust these reviews more than anything you could put out yourself. Any advertisement, any web content that you put out, anything you say on your website, all of that stuff takes second place to what. The reviews say about you right so let me ask you a question something to really think about in your business is your business set up to produce satisfied customers is your business set up to produce satisfied customers think about that for a minute I mean I'm serious think about this for a minute is your business set up to produce satisfied customers? Now, a lot of you are probably saying yes, all right? And now not to knock you, not to knock you, but here's my take on satisfied customers. To me, a satisfied customer is a liability. They are a liability. Why, you ask? Why would a satisfied customer be a liability? Well. If we think about the, the scale from completely pissed off to absolutely thrilled, absolutely thrilled, like bragging about you to anybody and everybody that will listen, right? If that's the scale, where does a satisfied customer fall? So satisfied customer obviously falls behind thrilled what's actually next to a satisfied customer what would be next on the scale well something that's a little indifferent okay yeah they came they did the work I paid them the products fine it's just okay it's just okay so let me ask you this think about this who is more likely to write, go online, go out of their way to go online and write a review? A satisfied customer or an absolutely thrilled customer? The thrilled customer, right? In fact, getting satisfied customers to go online and write reviews is hard work. It's hard work. We do it here every day. I, this is one of the biggest things that I've been asked this year is how do we get more online reviews and people don't like the answers, right? Because it's, it comes down to a few fundamental points, right? And this is one of them. A satisfied customer 
will go online, sure, you know, but it depends on their level of satisfaction. Now, a thrilled customer is going to go online. Who's more likely to send you a referral? Who's more likely to do business with you again, right? A thrilled customer or a satisfied customer? Again, getting a satisfied customer to do anything is hard work. To get them to give you a referral, hard work. To get them to give you more business, hard work. We have to work really hard to do that. But if you have thrilled customers, right, it becomes, the job becomes a whole lot easier. And here's the other thing. Here's the other thing about having a system and, and, and think about this. You have a system right now for customer experience. You have a system. It may not be a good one, but you have one, all right? And if it's set up, if it's set up to create satisfied customers, the, um, the, the likelihood, let's say, of you going to unhappy or just okay, right, is much greater than if you had a system that was designed to create a thrilled customer, right? Think about that. So if I have a thrilled customer and I mess up a little bit, I'm gonna have a satisfied customer. Now, they may or may not go online, they may or may not give me referrals, they may, but they're satisfied. They're not gonna go online and bash me. They're not gonna be pissed off and cost me jobs and you know referrals and all of that. They're satisfied, right? But it's all about the system that you have, the system for customer experience. Okay, so there's never been a time, and I've been at this like a lot of you. I mean, I've been doing this since I'm 21 years old, right? I've been at this a long time, and I've been in business on my own since 20, I forget if it's 23 or 24, I think it's 24. So 25 years I've been doing this. And I, you know, it used to be when I started in business, when a lot of us started in business, it used to be that if we didn't do a great job for somebody, they'd go tell some of their friends, right? Today, not only are they gonna go tell some of their physical friends, they're gonna go tell the entire world, right? They're gonna post reviews that the entire world can see. Right? And they're going to talk to people that they don't even know, that nobody knows, right? But it's just, it's going to be out there. People are going to believe it, and it's going to have an impact. So there's never been a time in all of my years of doing business, and probably yours too, where customer experience was as critical to your success as it is today, right? So let's talk about customer experience, right? Aside from the obvious, right? The obvious is your reputation in the market. What is that worth to you? So for me, as a business owner, it's, it's of utmost importance, right? It's absolutely critical. You know, my, you work in a local universe of homeowners. I work in a small group, you know, with a, it, inside of a small, uh, uh, essentially buying group of entrepreneurs and business owners in the home improvement business. If I have a bad reputation, my business is, you know, it's never going to be, it's never gonna live up to its potential, it's never gonna be as profitable as it could be, and it's gonna be friggin' hard, and it's gonna suck. Right? Business is not going to be fun. And I'm not going to make money. Same thing with you, right? Your customer is homeowner 45 to 65 that lives in whatever neighborhoods and you know they drive this car and they're, you know, executives or they're they're middle class or whatever they are. But that's the group that your reputation needs to be rock solid with, right? So the, the deal here is 
what we want to create are raving fans, like raving, you know? And the question becomes, well, how do you create raving fans? And some people will ask, well, what's the difference between a satisfied customer and a, and a raving fan? Well, a raving fan is going to go out and tell the world about you, brag about you, right? In a couple minutes here, we're going to talk about a company that does it better than anybody else on the planet, right? When people go go to this place, they when they leave, they want to tell everybody about it. And that's what built this place, right? Can it build your business too? A satisfied customer, look, here's, here's a whole bunch of questions to think about, right? How do we get more five-star reviews? It starts with the customer experience. It's not about the technology that you have. It's not about, you know, um, it, it's not about uh, how many times you ask. It's all about did you deliver an experience to the customer that they want to go and tell people about? How do we get more leads online? So we have a client that we did a case study on this where in, in one year, they increased their number of Google reviews pretty significantly, increased their star rating through our platform, and guess what? Their internet leads went up by 60%. Is there a correlation? Of course there's a correlation. What about referrals? What about referrals? Who's going to get more referrals? Right? Is a raving fan going to send you more referrals or is a, um, a, a merely satisfied customer? Right? What about repeat business? Who's going to come back and do business with you again? Who wants to see you do what you do again? Who wants to do business with you again? Now, if you do this stuff right, if you do this stuff right, can you lower your lead costs? Does it cost less to get a repeat customer, to get a referral, to get word of mouth than it does to advertise on TV, on the internet, go to shows, go to events? Of course. Now, I'm not saying completely abandon all of that stuff. No, have that stuff. But what will happen is as you get better and better and you get better reviews and you get more referrals and you get more repeat business, what is that going to do to your lead cost? It's going to bring that lead cost down. What about pricing? How do you sell prices higher than your competition? Well, one of the things that you do is you create a reputation that's so rock solid that people will wait for you and pay more money to be with you. I have a client, Aries Roofing, in, uh, in Tampa, Florida. People wait to see them. People know they're going to get the exact same product with the exact same guarantee that they can get from five other people in the market, maybe 10. But guess what? They're willing to wait for Aerie and they're willing to pay more. And everybody knows you're going to pay more to work with Aerie. Why? Because they have raving fans. That's why. Because people trust them. They have confidence in them. Now, who's more profitable? Which business is more profitable, the one with raving fans or the one with satisfied customers? You know, the businesses that have higher rates of repeat and referral, that have lower marketing costs are naturally and priced higher than the competition are naturally what? What is the natural result? They are more profitable. And isn't that why we're all in business? We want to be more profitable. Right? This is a profit stream. You know, look, it's all good. You know, having a reputation, a good reputation, treating people right, you know, giving them the experience they deserve. That's all great. And I'm all for all of that. But at the end of the day, let's face it, everybody, we're in business to make a profit. These are strategies for maximizing profitability. These are strategies for decreasing your marketing costs. These are strategies for gaining market share. These are strategies for recession proofing your business, right? This is ultimately all about making more money and being more successful 
in business. Okay? And all of that stems from the customer experience. Okay? It all stems from the customer experience. Now, our job as business owners is to think about every interaction we have with a customer, that our business has with a customer, and ask ourselves a really simple question. And that question is, at this point, at this customer interaction, how do I get my customer to say, wow, wow. These guys are different. Oh my God, I've never seen that before. And they go talk to their friends. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. When they walked in the house, they had these surgical booties that they put on so they wouldn't get the floor dirty. You wouldn't believe how neat the salesperson was. You wouldn't believe how well prepared the salesperson was. You wouldn't believe how neat and clean the installers were. I mean, they ripped windows out of my house and put new ones in, and you wouldn't even know it. That's wowing your customer. Follow-up, staying in touch, talking with them, letting them know every point of the way about the process. Right? So for me, now I call this designing and executing the exceptionally memorable experience. You can call it whatever you want, as long as it's exceptional and it's memorable. All right? And the way to think about this is from the very first phone call, very first contact with your customer, all the way through job completion and beyond. And what you've got to do, like I said, is look at each interaction point with your customer. Okay? Now, in home improvement, um, there are a few major touch points that are important. And what I always like to do, look, I'm not, I don't want to create anything new. I'm not an inventor. Right? In business, you really shouldn't be either. We're not selling iPhones. None of us are selling iPhones. Right? So what we can do is we can go and look at exceptional companies in the areas where we want to improve right so if we're talking about improving in the areas of customer experience who do we go to we go to Disney who's the greatest in the world we go to the Ritz Carlton we go to a company like Zappos we go to Apple we go to Nordstrom we look at these companies and we learn and then we take what we can from them and bring them into our business, all right? So Walt Disney, who's, who, you know, when you talk about repeat, referral, relationship with customers, um, Walt is like nobody else, I think, ever. Okay? Look at the business that he built. Okay? Now, Walt said something great. Walt said, do what you do so well that when people see you do it, they want to see you do it again and will bring others to see you do it. Think about that. Sorry, I'm writing something down. I just got an idea. By the way, sometimes these things, you know, when I put these things together for you guys, I'm, I'm a business owner just like you guys are. I see this stuff and I get... I get ideas. I get, you know, how can we improve a, pro a part of our process in our business, right? So anyway, I digress. So think about the process. You know, at Disney, you know, Disney is amazing. How many, you know, everybody's been to Disney, right? Everything is thought through. Everything is planned. Everything is choreographed. Do you know that they replace light bulbs before they go out? Do you know that they paint fences? They paint stuff before it needs to be painted? So that every day, that place, I used to have a guy that worked for me um, during the day, and he would work at Disney at night. He was on the maintenance crew after the park closed. And, and we'd talk about it. It was really fascinating. Basically, and this is in Disney books and stuff too, you could read about 
uh, about the experience. But do you know that every single night, that place was completely reset for the next day, for perfection the next day. So when that park opened, everything worked, everything looked right, everything was clean, right? Isn't that one of the cleanest places you've ever been in your life? So walk to do what you do so well that when people see you do it, they wanna see you do it again. There's your formula for repeat business. You wanna get more referrals, right? Then this is the second part, and we'll bring others to see you do it. So when, when and he's talking here about do what you do so well. In home improvement, Right. We, again, we don't sell. We don't sell iPhones. Right. We sell service. It's all about the customer experience. Products are great, but let's face it. You know, everybody's got great windows. Everybody's got a great roofing system. If you install this stuff right, it's all great. You know, some things are a little better than others. Some quality, you know. But in the end, your key differentiator is not going to be your product, like. With the iPhone, your key differentiator is going to be the customer experience. So use Disney as a guide, as a guide. Now, there are some great books about, um, about Disney. They're in there somewhere. Um, just go to, you know, go to Amazon and um, look up books about Disney, about Disneyland in particular, look for the highest rated ones, the most popular ones, and buy a couple of those. The other thing to do is go on a field trip. And I'm not kidding you, <laughs> take your family and go to Disneyland. But go there with a different set of eyes now. Go there with a set of eyes of, okay, how can I take some of what these people are doing at Disney and integrate that into my business? Now look, I do seminars and workshops on this subject. We go deep into this. In fact, we're going to do one in February um, attached to our Accelerate event. If any of you are interested in really, really going deep uh, into this, just reach out to me and I'll let you know about it before we um, make it available to the general public. Um, how many of you are familiar with a company called Zappos? Now, Zappos is an amazing company. And one of the things to look at with Zappos, what to learn from Zappos is the phone. When most other retailers, online retailers, are you know, doing everything they can to not get you to call and talk to a human being, Tony Shea, the guy that runs Zappos, he wants you to call, right? His customer service to him is a marketing spend. It's a marketing spend. It's not an expense that he wants to cut and avoid. It's marketing for his business. Now, again, I go deep on this in, 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 in workshops, but here's what you do for today with Zappos. Call them up, call them, go to their website. The phone number's on the top of every single page. Call them up and say, I'm looking for a pair of shoes, right? Now with most companies, with most companies, the person on the other end picking up the phone is gonna say, are you uh, like a moron? Uh, don't you know that on our website there's millions of shoes that you can slice and dice and, and pick out whatever? There's millions of options. Why are you calling me, asking me, telling me I want a pair of shoes? Zappos isn't like that. And by the way, by the way, Zappos was sold to Amazon just a few years ago for over a billion dollars, all right? This was their key. This was their key. So you wanna learn how your people should be on the phone with your customers? Call Zappos, Zappos and experience that and take what you get from that experience and integrate it into your company. That's what we're doing with all of this stuff, by the way. The Ritz-Carlton. So the Ritz-Carlton, here's what we can learn from them. Your installers out in the field. So for any of you that have been to a Ritz-Carlton, if you, if you have one in your city, which most of us do, go there. Another field trip, right? Go walk around the hotel. 
if you can, spend the weekend there. Here's what you're looking for. All right, I'm going to tell you exactly what you're looking for. You're looking for the interaction between you, the guest, and every single employee in that place. That's what you're looking at. Here's one of their mottos. We are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. I love this. Okay, Think about something. Your installers. How many of your installers can afford the neighborhoods where you go and you do your installs? Can they? Can't they? I don't know. My guess is most of them can't. So how does that make them feel? Does that make them feel uncomfortable? Does that maybe in some cases make them feel envious? Maybe there's a tiny bit of anger, jealousy, maybe, maybe. Now look, your people may be completely different. But here's why this is such a great lesson. We are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter who you are and what job you do at the Ritz-Carlton. Part of their deal is you are a lady or a gentleman and our guests are ladies and gentlemen. We're on an even playing field, right? Your job is to take care of our guest, okay? Your job is to take care of our guest. And it's amazing. And if you walk into a Ritz-Carlton, one of the things to really look out for is the eye contact. Anytime you're walking anywhere near an employee, they're not going to be looking down and they're not going to try and avoid eye contact with you. They're going to look you in the eye and they're going to say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. And they will, you can stop any one of them, anybody, doesn't matter what they do there, and they will immediately stop what they're doing to solve your problem, answer your question, take you somewhere, whatever you need, because you're the guest. The installers spend a lot of time with your people. The installers can make or break your company. You know this. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Right? But you can design and control that experience. Okay? So like I said, in home improvement, there are a number of major touch points. There's four of them. All right? Number one is the phone any phone interaction with your customer or prospect is a major touch point that needs to be looked at, designed, and executed on. The other is the in-home presentation with your salespeople, your technicians, wherever it happens to be. What is that like? Installation installation if the job's being done by a, a different crew, right? And then post-project, what, what happens after the job is completed. Those are your four major touch points, right? So let's talk about phone for a minute. And like I said, you know, let's learn from people that are doing this amazingly well, Z a company like Zappos, okay? So Think about how your phone is answered at your office. By the way, by the way, if you are not playing prospect with your business, you're nuts. You've got to play prospect with your business. You're missing out. You're, you, you don't always know what is going on if you aren't playing prospect. You've got to. And if you're not going to do it, have a, if it, your company's still small, have a friend do it and have them record everything. Everything. Okay. By the way, you should be recording your phone calls too, all of them. Everything that goes through your company. Right? It's cheap now. Back when we were doing it um, 10 years ago, it was not cheap and it was not easy to record phone calls. Right? How is your prospect or customer made to feel? when they call the office. Who is answering the phone? 
Right. So if you're if you're an inbound company like the client I was talking with yesterday, who is getting phone calls and has to set appointments, right? Is that person scripted? Do they know what the goal of that phone call is or that initial call? The goal is only to sell them on the appointment. That's it. It's not to sell the company. It's not to sell the job. It's not. It's to sell the appointment. I used to, by the way, in our company, I agonized over the scripts. Agonized. I had it down to where, I had it down to where, okay, here's how you answer the phone, all right? And then one of whatever it was, two or three things are going to happen. And then based on those two or three things, here was the word tracks for them. And it was all scripted right and now in, in our case what we did we had everybody we had eight people uh, uh, up to eight people in like a bullpen and we had a counter like this and me or my partner could go stand there or the manager could go and stand there and listen to the phones and listen to our end of the conversation because we knew we knew that we would set more appointments if we went on this path versus that path. The more we let them say whatever they wanted to say, the less success that we had. It's a whole nother conversation, but it's just something to keep in mind, right? So that's the phone call. Once you set the appointment, what are you doing to set your salesperson up for success? You know, what are you doing to show the prospect now that you're different from everyone else? So are you sending them out an email introducing them to the, the salesperson that's going to come? Is there some sort of welcome kit that's going out? Are you sending them any information about, about the business? Um, what are you doing to make the appointment sticky? You know, so that's the, the second piece of it. Now, what about the in-home presentation, right? So how do your salespeople look? Do you have a dress code for them? Are they using technology? How are they showing up? Are they showing up with a whole bunch of like binders and samples and crap at the front door and looking like a salesperson or are they showing up neat, clean, professional with just booties in one hand, maybe an iPad in the other hand, and that's it. Because I'm here initially for a consultation. I'm not here to sell you something yet, right? Part of the sales process, part of the sales process. Um, what do they walk in with? What happens when the deal is closed? What happens if the deal is not closed? are all things to think about in the process. Again, play prospect, play customer, go through the entire process yourself so that you see what's actually going on. Installation. Okay, this one is important, maybe critically important, right? This, this, is, where, this is where you can really shine and this is where you can really mess up. Sorry, I've got comments. Oh, I love that, Ron. Uh, Ron said, um, uh, the goal is to make the customer, when they call in, make them feel like they called the right place. I love that. That's great. Ron, sorry, my friend. I'm going to steal that from you because that's really good. But a project installation, think about it. What's going on outside of the house? If you have to go inside the house, what's going on? You know, how much training do your, do your installers have on dealing with your customer? Not on their trade, you know, because we're going to assume they already know how to install windows. We're going to assume they already know how to tear a roof off and put a new one on. We're going to assume that they already know how to fix a leaky faucet or replace the toilet in our handyman company you know I had up to a hundred handyman at one time working for me 
uh, I think it was over, actually, I'm thinking it was over 100 handymen at one time working for me. We didn't teach them how to be handymen. All of our training was on our system. Here is our system. Here's how, here's the customer experience. Here's what you do at the front door. Here's what you do next. Here's how you present the price. Blah, 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 blah. Here's how you dress. That's what we trained them on. Right? We had all kinds of stuff. We had stuff about how they smelled, right? Because a lot of these guys are smoking cigarettes, and you stink when you smoke cigarettes. I'm sorry, but you know you do, right? So you can't go to somebody's house, especially nowadays. You could have done this 30 years ago. But nowadays, you go to somebody's house and you smell like cigarettes, more than likely most people are going to be turned off immediately. That smell is going to completely shut them down, right? So is that something that's being thought about? The other thing, too, on the other side of that is, are they all perfumed up? That could turn people off, too. You don't want somebody to go out and be all perfumed up, right? But these are all things that need to be in your process. They need to be part of, this is how we do it here, okay? What about project completion? So what most companies do, what most com uh, uh, contractors do, is after the job is done, they've got their check, boom, they're on to the next one, completely forgetting about leaving this customer on their own. Well, one, it's a really bad business strategy, really bad, because you want to stay in touch with this customer. You want to maximize that customer's value. Right? They can buy more from you. They can send you referrals. They can um, it, it, it spread positive word of mouth about you. There's all kinds of ways that that customer is still valuable to you after they've given you the last check. Right? So the thing to think about now is how do you say thank you? So for our clients, we send out a thank you, whether it's a card or it's a box with cookies in it and a thank you card, we make a big deal out of saying thank you, right? What about feedback? How are we getting that feedback, which is so critical today to success, right? Do we have a system for getting referrals? Remember, remember, if you're not giving people a great experience, forget about you know, keeping in touch with them, forget about them giving you reviews, forget about getting referrals, forget about getting repeat business, right? Forget it. It all starts with the customer experience, right? And project completion. So say thank you and then stay in touch with them. You know, there's companies that are calling people, but when, if you're just calling people, you're only using one way of getting a hold of people. One way of communicating, use email, use direct mail, right? Use all three and don't make every single communication about, hey, give us more money, give us more money. Uh, you know, they, I love these big companies with the call centers. They call and they call and they call and it's like, hey, it's time, give me more money, give us more money. It's, you know, it's amazing what happens, by the way, when in front of that phone call, you put a newsletter, a company newsletter. You put that newsletter in front, it's got a recipe in there, it's got some fun stuff in there, it's not all about windows, it's not all about roofing, it's not all about plumbing. And then you call them after that and you say, hey, did you get the newsletter? What do you think about the recipe this month? I haven't tried it yet. But I think I'm going to give it to my wife and ask her, or I'm going to give it to my husband, and I'm going to see if the kids want it, right? Much different conversation. We also, when you make those calls, your results go through the roof, through the roof, right? Because the approach is different. Same thing with referrals. Keep in touch with them about Referrals. But the first thing with referrals that you have to know is, hey, you got to earn the right to referrals. How do you earn the right to referrals? Well, referrals are about trust and confidence and value. So what are you doing to build trust? What are you doing to give your customer confidence? And what are you doing to build more and more value into what you do? 
right? Into, into what they're getting from their relationship with you, right? It's not only, it's that, uh, you know, it's not a simple exchange of money anymore. So one of the things too that you really want to think about here is post project is how am I going to protect my customers from my competition? How am I going to protect my customer from going to somebody else? Right? So this is where the communication comes in. How are we staying in touch with our customer? What are we saying to them? How much value are we giving them? How much confidence are we giving them? Right? And most importantly, always remember this. Always remember this. People don't remember what you said. They don't remember what you did. What people are going to remember is how you made them feel. How you made them feel. So how do you want to make your customers feel? Right? So customer experience really drives more referrals, more repeat business, more word of mouth, premium pricing, and online reviews. And all of these things lead to what? You making more money, having a more sustainable business for the long term, having more success for a longer period of time. And it really is one of the most effective ways and one of the most effective strategies for recession proofing your business. Now, I'm not going to go into it all here. We're just about ready to wrap up. And if anybody's got uh, questions for me, um, I'm happy to answer uh, any questions that you've got. Just put them into the, into the question box. But look, business is good now. This year has been good, great. Next year, probably also going to be great. And probably into 2019. Things are probably going to be good over the next couple of years, barring some major calamity. But what about after that? At some point, things are going to turn. And look, and this is not doom and gloom talk. Please don't get me wrong. This is opportunity talk. What are you going to do today to establish your business so that when things do turn around and change, as they always do and always will, what are you going to do to make sure that your business is protected? That you have controls in place, that you have systems in place to not only survive through that, but to thrive. And I'll tell you, one of the places to start, one of the, the key underlying fundamental foundational places for you to start is in your customer experience. You get that right, and it will help you with a whole bunch of other stuff as well, right? So um, let me see here if we have any questions. Any questions, anybody? All right, so look, um, I would like to offer all of you a strategy session with us. Um, we, um, we have this very cool tool called the Wealthy Contractor Opportunity Map. And what you'll do is you'll get with somebody on my team who works with this tool, and we're gonna look at eight key areas of your business. Eight areas of your business that can really dramatically increase your profitability. We're going to ask you some questions and then we're going to take that information. We're going to discuss opportunity, profit opportunity, growth opportunity in your business. Then we'll get back with you and give you a custom plan. Now, at the end of this plan, you can do whatever you want. I mean, if you want to go take the plan and execute it yourself, by all means go. There's no obligation for this whatsoever. To do, it, to do anything with us. The reason why we do this, by the way, just in full disclosure, some of you will want us to do some of those things for you. That's how it works. This is how we get our best clients. 
Um, so um, look below at the at the link. It's a kind of a funky little link, but it's tiny dot cc forward slash g f o u r one. You can go there and you can fill out the form there, or you can call us. Just call us three zero five eight five six eight seven eight eight. Um, the other thing too is let me put this poll up here um, and let me know if you want to schedule a no obligation wealthy contractor strategy session um, just go ahead and hit the um, just answer one of the questions yes not sure maybe or no not at this time I'm gonna I'm gonna wait um, go ahead and fill that out oh wow great keep going over half of you have uh, hit the poll. I'll, I'm going to shut it down here in just a second. So let's get uh, let's get everybody to answer the question, and then we'll wrap up here for the day. I hope this training has been valuable um, for you guys. Just a couple more of you. Just a few more of you. Nine, eight, seven. Six, three, two, one. All right, let's close that out. Um, uh, so yeah, um, I hope this has been valuable for you. Um, again, oh, one of the things I mentioned is that we will be doing a customer experience workshop in February as part of the Accelerate Live event. So you guys are the first ones that are hearing about this. We're going to start promoting Accelerate Live in a couple weeks, but it's going to be here in beautiful, sunny South Florida in February. Did that on purpose. We're going to be right on the beach. A beautiful hotel. Got you guys a great deal on the hotel. We're going to have amazing lineup of speakers and experts and talking all about how to just it, just multiply your profits in 2018. Um, so that's going to be February 7th and 8th, and the customer experience workshop is a bonus day on on the 9th. And if anybody's uh, interested in that, you can just reach out to me, and I'll put you on the the wait list because we haven't uh, opened that up yet. Um, so if there aren't any questions uh, I will wrap up for the day and look at that right at 11 o'clock one hour and most of you are still here which means either you have questions or you're just not paying attention to me whatsoever I'd like to think that you're just furiously taking notes and that you've gotten so much out of this that you just can't wait to take notes and come up with some ideas of of how to execute and implement an amazing killer customer experience into your business. Anyway, so thank you all for being here. Um, I appreciate it. If there's anything that we can do to help, um, the number is 305-856-8788. And um, let us know. And take advantage of the strategy session there's no obligation to buy anything we're gonna open your eyes to some potential opportunity in your business and we're gonna show you how to take advantage of that opportunity um, and we'll see where it goes from there all right thank you so much appreciate you being here and I will see you next time